So I'm so pleased to invite you to go and welcome to the stage the first of our partner talks, Matt Grab, who is the CTO of Qualcomm. As the CTO, he's involved in all of their efforts to imagine a future where nearly everything we have will be connected in one form or another. But Matt is going to surprise us by talking about Qualcomm's work with the president's recently announced Brain Initiative, which is a massive multi-agency, multi-university effort to understand the human brain in a new degree of specificity. Matt. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, it's going to be a little different uh, topic than we usually talk about at Qualcomm, but we're actually quite excited in this, and we're really putting a large effort on it. You might recognize some of these guys. Uh, that's von Neumann and uh, Isaac Asimov, and they're some of the, some of the luminaries that uh, inspired us uh, with this program we now call Xerath. So take a look at this picture. This is, uh, this is what happens when you take your dog to the beach and, you're, and you want to play uh, fetch. And an uh, interesting thing happens. You take the ball, you throw the ball into the beach. If you throw the ball perfectly straight, 90 degrees, the dog will run from you to the edge of the water and get in the water and swim towards the ball, get the ball, swim back to the shore, bring it back to you in a nice and straight line, which makes sense because the dog is trying to get the ball back to you as fast as possible. However, if you take the ball and throw it down the beach a little bit, maybe the first time the dog will go right at the ball, but the dog will quickly learn that if it has to do that, it has to swim really far and it can go a lot faster on the sand. So after a few tries, the dog will actually run part of the way and swim part of the way and eventually will reach an angle that is pretty close to Snell's law, a, two, a, a wave passing through two different media and uh, it's quite optimal. And uh, how did it know that? How did it do that? And how did the trainer teach it to do that? Well, if you were to make a robot to do this, you could do it. It would be hard. You would write code, and you would put case statements, and you would do some calculus, and you would try to optimize. But if your machine was a biologically inspired brain, like the dog actually is, then a kid can teach it to do that by going and practicing and saying good dog, bad dog, and throwing the thing. So <clears throat> that is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a class of processor that has some of these properties. And it's, a, it's an ambitious goal, but we've been actually working on this pretty difficult problem. And you might say, well, why is, why is Qualcomm trying to do this? Qualcomm is wireless. Well, correct. <clears throat> Mobile is a very challenging design environment. We're under constraints for power, performance, size, and it turns out that a, a brain is incredibly high performance at these same features. Uh, it's very power efficient, uh, incredible density of performance when you consider all that's doing. So all the processes we've done to date are sort of derivatives of von Neumann type architecture, Harvard architecture, where you've got a processing unit, you grab memory, you grab data, you compute, you store the result. We've gotten much better at it, multiple cores, caches, and so forth, but they're all basically extensions of that idea. A brain is nothing like that. So we're looking now to biology to inspire us for a new generation of processors. And so take a look at this picture and let it, let it kind of soak in for a second. Can you see the dog? Can anyone see it? <clears throat> it's there. And uh, it turns out that a conventional image detection is very, very much challenged by trying to see a pattern like that. But, uh, but you know, a lot of folks here can see that you know, within a second or two. And uh, so the brain, the brain possesses superior capabilities for image recognition as well. And we're trying to understand fundamentally why that is and to be able to, to bring that to bear. So one of the attributes here is the, the brain is massively parallel. In a, in a computer, if you try to break down a problem like that vision, you might pass through a million steps with some parallelism that might be less than order of 10. Whereas a brain may only go through a number of steps which is less than the order of the 10, order of 10, but have a, a million uh, parallel steps. So it's, it's a very different kind of architecture. And it's very, very power efficient. Human brain around 20 watts, runs all the time. Even when you're sleeping, it's doing many things. And if you, you know, compute the energy cost of that, it's, it's a fraction of a cent per hour. 
That's 0.24 cents, not, not 24 cents. And uh, if you were to try to simulate that with, with modern semiconductor technology, it's three or four, five maybe, orders of magnitude more. Of course, we're getting better, but we're still orders of magnitude away. So what do we do? To replicate this, we take a neuron and we study it. Now, we're, we're, you know, this has been done for many, many years, and uh, we're benefiting enormously from the incredible work that's been done. But we, we basically take a neuron and we create a neuron model. This is Eugene Itzikevich's model. He's a partner with us, and I'll explain that in a minute. You, you compile a transfer function of the neuron under a whole bunch of conditions. You make models of it, which are hopefully biologically plausible but computationally efficient. And then you create tools to be able to synthesize structures, test and evaluate and simulate, and maybe replicate some of these interesting behaviors. So that's what we've set out to do. And the results are really, really amazing. I'm going to show you a couple of videos of some very encouraging early results. And we are now ready, and I'd like to let everyone know, that on a limited basis with selected partners, we're ready to engage you. We're well ready to make some of these tools available. And uh, perhaps if you've got an application you're developing and you'd like to try it out, we're ready to start doing that. We've got a very nice suite of tools that can go all the way from uh, design synthesis, simulation, and then realization even in hardware. <clears throat> OK, so this is a video of one of the robots that we've built in this program. And it'll show you a behavior somewhat similar, although a precursor of what the dog was doing on the beach. And you'll see it going around. Go ahead, can you run the video, please? You'll see it going around, and um, maybe I need to click one more time here. OK, there we go. And that doesn't seem like the right one. OK, I'll, I'll describe to you. I think, I think they'll get it. You'll see this robot walking around on the floor. And it's, we're going to train it to like certain objects, certain targets. And uh, we'll do that by kind of pushing a little button. OK. Sorry. I'll tell you what, while they're getting that, I'll, I'll talk. Oh, here we go. OK. So first, this robot is just exploring. And then we're going to train it that those white squares are good. And, by, and we're going to do that by pushing good robot, good. And it'll say, oh, I like that. That's good. <laughs> and pretty soon, we'll teach it that the white ones are good and the other ones are scary. And this is a little time lapse here. You'll see it going back and forth between the white ones. Let's learn how to do that. And this is not a conventional von Neumann. This is completely, everything here is biologically realistic uh, spiking neurons in, implemented in hardware on that actual machine. So that's a live thing. That's an example. <clears throat> so where is this going? Um, this is a picture of a chip that's in a cell phone, which is our core business, Qualcomm. And you can see it's got CPUs, GPUs, graphics, DSPs for signals, codecs for video, modems and communi communications. Clearly, that's our thing. And we're envisioning now that there'll be this new type of processor, the neural processor unit, that will have a place on, on these kind of products. And then, for example, if your phone goes off when it's not supposed to, you, instead of going into menus and configurations, you say, bad phone, phone bad, <laughs> phone good. And then it will learn, taking in all this context, and it might be able to do some amazing things that it couldn't do before. Or you may be able to teach it to do things, like you train your dog without having to have a lot of expertise. So there's some very fascinating potential with that. Very Parallel tools, you know, design tools are very important here. Human-like functions. So that's our goal. OK, our, one of our partners is Brain Corporation. Um, they actually work in our facility, and, and we're very close with them. And here's a video that shows these techniques as applied to uh, pattern and vision recognition. So can we run that one? You'll see a little, uh, yeah, this uses spiking neural network. And you'll see this. It's, 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 decide, it's trying to track that car, OK? That's what the little square around it is and the little x. And it's tr here it's trying to track the ball. And you'll see it with distractors of similar colors. Uh, you'll see a couple of examples where it gets occluded in front of the target. And 
this is a, a very general machine. In fact, the same machine that you saw there can do other things like look at your hand and learn to be a gesture controller or learn to be a robot controller. It's not specifically designed to be just an image recognizer. And yet, when we compare it with a, a custom image recognizer and tracker like OpenTLD, the performance is actually comparable, which is extraordinary that something completely different is already at this early phase comparable to a specific algorithm. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the first transistor wasn't as good as the last tube, but it was on a trajectory to become quite a bit better. Same here. <clears throat> so we're envisioning applications for your cell phone that has natural interfaces, contextual awareness, robots, learning control, and then you can also use this as you search through data, looking for patterns. It's very efficient from a power perspective, so that has some implications on cost of, of, uh, of big data processing. Okay, last, uh, last one here. Uh, this is also a partner of ours, uh, Eugenio Colercillo from uh, Purdue. And he's using this, these uh, techniques to um, categorize objects as you, as you drive your car down the road. So can we roll that? Thank you. Okay, so you saw in there, um, sorry, that went a little fast, but you saw tree, person, road, vehicle, that kind of thing. And it's, again, it's categorized using these, these kind of techniques. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're very excited about it. We've been working on it for a couple of years, and we're really starting to talk about it now more externally. We've got uh, the ability now to, to start working with a few partners on the tools, and uh, it's, a, it's a very exciting project. So happy to take uh, a few questions real quick. Yes, excuse me. Actually, let me ask one question. So it says a lot about our current state of computer science that having one's phone be as dumb as a dog, and I, I, own, a, I own a bulldog. Or smart. You know, or smart. It, it says we're at a really basic stage, don't you think? It does. Yeah. I mean, we still like, ah, the darn thing doesn't do quite what I want it to do. Yeah. So, it doesn't uh, learn as well. It doesn't learn. Yeah. Well, that's right. Hmm. Let's take some questions from the floor. Uh, there's a roving mic. Please say who you are and where you're from, and a question's better than a statement. Hello, uh, I'm Haoli, a professor at USC. Uh, really, really impressive demos in the end. Uh, just a question, are they real time? Um, the robot one is real time. Yeah. The second one is uh, the one with the little RC car. It's not real time. And the last one is real time. Do you provide software frameworks that we can simulate or test these? Yes. Yes. So we have a we have a tool chain where you can you can drop down these structures, and uh, you can simulate them, and then ultimately synthesize them into hardware. And there's a question here in the front, please. This lady in the skirt. Sure. Forgive me. Hi, Melissa Flagon from the MacArthur Foundation. If I now have to train my phone, is it reproducible? And if it's on the cloud, how do I keep it from picking up bad habits that others are training? <laughs> 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 Great so, question. Uh, it is reproducible, and, and if you recall the scene from The Matrix where, where uh, Trinity said, I need to learn to fly this uh, helicopter in 10 minutes, um, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you could, you could have uh, your kid and you buy a, an RC race car, and uh, you can either buy it or you can buy the one that's been pre-driven by the world champion. And some of those uh, characteristics would be in the machine. And, it, and you could actually have the concept that we have an app store, you have a, like a memory store or an experience store. Um, the, uh, the issues of security are, the, are important and they are the same as the ones we face with conventional programming that uh, you want to protect. Uh, you know, the, it's not really software anymore. It's a different kind of paradigm, but you want to know where it came from and same, same issue. Thank you. Before I let Matt go, um, Matt, hold up your wrist, please. Oh, sure. So this is the, uh, this is the Qualcomm, uh, new Qualcomm smartwatch called the Talk, T-O-Q, <laughs> kind of like TikTok. And it's got the, uh, the always-on Mirasol display, <laughs> which is pretty cool. This display is actually a mechanical contraption with mirrors and springs, <laughs> MEMS, and it's, uh, it's really amazing. So that's a new, new, another new toy we have. Very cool. Matt, All thank right. you very, thank you very much. much. Thank you.